Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains and to the Algorithms course at the University of Cambridge. This is the third video in a series in which we use dynamic programming to solve problems, and the problem we're solving today is one that I posed to you in the very first video in this lecture course, the one about DNA sequences. As I told you several times, the only way to become proficient at this is to actually write your own programs. So if you are part of the elite who back then stopped and thought about the problem hard enough and then wrote a program to solve it, then well done, congratulations, you're probably heading for a first in this course. And go back and uh, dig out the program you wrote and feed to it, I'm going to give you a hospital flavored uh, example, feed to it the two strings amputation and sprain and see what the longest common subsequence is. If you did try back then but couldn't get to a solution on your own, maybe because you had never heard of dynamic programming before in your life, well now is the chance to give it another try. Because in the past two videos we have discussed examples of applying dynamic programming to other problems, uh, and you might now have some insight into using that same strategy on the longest common subsequence problem. So what you should do is to derive an expression, a recursive expression for the optimal solution to the longest common subsequence in terms of uh, optimal solutions to subproblems of smaller, um, smaller strings between which you find the longest common subsequence. Once you manage to formulate the problem in these terms, then dynamic programming comes into its own almost by itself. And then what you need to do is to write a program that bottom up computes uh, successive optimal solutions to larger and larger problems until you get to the solution of the entire problem. So you do this uh, bottom-up implementation and if you are extra keen you could also use something else I described in, in, in the introductory video to dynamic programming where you instead write a top-down program which would normally take exponential time but will take only low polynomial time if you memoize it, meaning you make it remember any results that it computed so it doesn't recompute the same ones again. I realize that by now I'm starting to sound a bit like a broken record, but please do it. I really mean it. My experience shows me that whenever I set an exam question on dynamic programming, although there is a, a sizable group of people who are very good at it, uh, there is still a sizable minority of students who demonstrate by their answers that they don't have much of a clue, and this is a shame. I want all of you to become proficient at dynamic programming, and the only way you can do that is if you practice enough that you develop the ability to express the solution recursively in terms of optimal solutions to small subproblems, and you then implement the algorithm bottom-up that builds up the solutions from smallest to largest. So please get this practice in, do it, it will do you good in the long term, I promise. This is yet another instance of solving a problem with dynamic programming. This one is one that you may recall as a problem I posed the very first day. So I'm just going to give you the way to solve it. Now, on page 12, I gave this exact problem. You have sequences of uh, what look like uh, DNA bases, but they could be any kind of strings. It's a problem that bioinformaticians uh, solve a lot, but uh, it generalizes to any strings. And you want to find subsequences that are common to both strings. And the subsequence is what you obtain by keeping some of the characters and dropping others. And so the subsequence CC exists in here, but CC exists in here. So that's a common subsequence between those two. And you want to find uh, a subsequence 
common to both and of maximum length. There could be several, just like there were several uh, optimal solutions in the previous problem. There could be several optimal solutions in this problem too. And you want to find uh, some optimal solution to this. And uh, you could uh, take every possible subsequence of this, which is, you take this as, um, if you have n characters, you consider an n bit string with zero meaning I don't take it and one means I take it. And so you have uh, two to the n ways of making subsequences of this. And for each of these two to the n uh, subsequences, you will check if it is also a subsequence of this one uh, with just a, a linear pass over this. And this certainly will give you the answer, but it will uh, have an exponential cost in the size of the subsequence. So um, this already prompts me to a feature that is common with dynamic programming. And so maybe I will be able to use dynamic programming and not pay exponential cost, but something small. Uh, being able to do that depends on me being able to find a way to express the optimal solution to this problem in terms of optimal solutions to similar smaller problems. Am I going to be able to do that? If I can do that, then uh, maybe that's my route to a solution using dynamic program. So to express this um, optimal solution for x and y, so optimal solution, and here I'm saying uh, opt as simply the length of the longest common subsequence between uh, x and y is going to be what? Well, if uh, x is the empty string, there's no common subsequence as possible between the empty string and anything. So, uh, and same for y. If x or y is empty. Ah, I'm outside. Someone should warn me that I'm writing off screen in this situation. Okay. If it's empty, then uh, the length of the longest common subsequence is going to be a big zero. Now, if they um, finish with the same letter. If they finish with the same letter, there's certainly going to be some subsequence that includes that letter for both. It's common to both anyway, so I could finish with that. If I pretend that they, these finished with A, then there's certainly going to be a common subsequence where A is the last character, and uh, if I take that A plus the solution to the problem of this x minus the last character and y minus the last character, then I'm going to get an optimal solution to my original problem. Because uh, if I substitute anything else, uh, then uh, if I didn't use the optimal solution to this, I could get a longer thing by instead taking the optimal solution and adding the A. So I say, if same final character, then it's one for that last character plus opt of x minus the last character, which I'm going to write in Python slice notation, like this, uh, y up to the last character, like this. And if the last character is different and they're both not empty, then what is the optimal solution? I don't actually know, but I could try shrinking them in turn. So I would say, let me try removing the last character from this one and trying this string with the original y. But maybe instead the 
optimal solution is obtained by taking this uh, away and trying the rest of y with the whole of the original x. So I'm going to say is going to be the max of these two options. One is to say opt of I take one from the end of x and then I run it against y or vice versa I take x as it was and I take one from the end of y. Am I still making sense or have I sent you to sleep? Not if I'm making sense. For some of you I'm making sense. Not as many as I would like. Um, on the plus side of life, the microphone seems to still be working, so I just woke it up with that uh, mini charge at the start. Okay, and we seem to be getting away with shrinking the screen here. So, um, ah, yeah, we have something on longest common subsequence in here on page 55. Uh, I guess I've written written the same thing in a different way in the formula over here. And as we know, okay, by now we know the drill, we can go top down, and if we go top down, we need to memoize, otherwise uh, we will get into trouble, or we can go bottom up. And if we go bottom up, what we would do is draw ourselves a matrix uh, where we would put one string on this side and one string on this other side and we would start from bottom up means from the empty string onwards. So I have the empty string, an empty string here uh, plus any character. So um, for reasons that will be clear if you actually develop the problem, it's cute to um, write amputation here. Amputation is not a pleasant uh, thing. Uh, sprain is also not pleasant, although not as unpleasant as amputation. Uh, and we are trying to see uh, what is the longest common subsequence between amputation and sprain. Very grim exercise. Uh, but before this, I have the empty string. Before this, I have the empty string. So empty string for as a subsequence of this. Uh, so this would be empty string and empty string, maximum length is zero. Empty string and S maximum length is zero. Empty string and anything is zero. Empty string from the sprain and any combination of the amputation also give me zero. And then for anything that's in the middle of this matrix, uh, for example, here, I would have, this is opt of uh, this is am and spra. What is the longest common subsequence between am and spra? Well, assuming that I have computed uh, everything else leading up to here, then what I'm going to do is apply this formula and say, uh, are they both empty? No. Is it the same final character? No. So I'm in this else case. So it's going to be the maximum of taking one character off from one string and the other string, and one character off uh, the opposite combination. So this is going to be the maximum of what? Of opt. Ah, uh, why don't you tell me that I'm doing things you can't see? Right. Maximum of opt. Uh, of a spra and uh, opt of am spra. And the nice thing about working bottom up is that the bottom of a, the, the optimum of a spra is what I find here that I computed previously. And the optimum of am spur 
is here that I also computed previously. So I look for the best of these two, and I copy it into here. So, uh, and again, for these ones, in turn, I, I always, for any cell, I always look at the cell that's above me or that to my left. And so since I started in order, I can always look it up and just take the maximum. It's a trivial operation. If I were in the case of something where they finish with the same letter, uh, such as this one actually is, A and SPRA, which is here, uh, is one where the best uh, comes from this second case. If the same final character, then it's one, because final character could be included in my optimal solution, plus the optimal solution for having removed that last character from both of them, which means going diagonally backwards and upwards. So because I have made a, quite a mess of this diagram, I'm going to magnify it uh, until we can see somewhat more clearly that um, this is the first, this is the uh, So this was uh, mm. so the A uh, and the SPRA is this one. This cell A uh, and SPRA uh, comes from one plus this one. Because I remove the SPRA, I remove the A uh, and I get SPRA, I remove the A uh, and I get the empty string, and so this cell is going to be the one I'm coming from. So it's this zero plus the one for having gone diagonally. I get the one in here. And then this other one is going to be uh, the zero that I will get from here if I do the work. A uh, maximum between this zero and this one is a one. And then I keep going. And so sometimes I take uh, the best from here. Sometimes I take the best from uh, there. And sometimes uh, I take just the diagonal and add one. And I only add one to my length when I'm going on the diagonal. So in the end, I will arrive at the bottom of uh, the matrix here. And at that point, uh, I will have the maximum number uh, of diagonal steps that I've taken. And that would be my length of my uh, longest common subsequence. And if I wanted to find out what the actual subsequence used was, I can just look up the places where I did a diagonal uh, step. That, that diagonal step tells, tells me I used an A at this point. So if I take an example that I have already completed at home in the interest of time, then this is one done with a uh, program. And you can see that the, the thing in common between sprain and amputation is pain. Ha <laughs> ha. Good job. And that's the end of this video as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you especially to those of you who are clicking the like button and subscribing to this channel. I am very grateful to all of you and I'm so happy that you are enjoying this material. The more you do so and the more YouTube will show it to other people who might discover it and enjoy it.